downfall of Romania's communist dictator over 20 years ago was a turning point for the country and the Eastern Bloc at large. But what of the brutal security apparatus that sustained his rule? With crucial parliamentary elections next month, the People and Power investigates whether the much-feared Securitate is still controlling Romania from the shadows. Earlier this year, Romania was rocked by anti-government street protests. Now it's in the grips of election fever. Its right-wing president, Traian Bezescu, is locked in a bitter power struggle with left-wing prime minister, Victor Ponta. But in a land steeped in superstition, the ghost of communism refuses to be laid to rest. And the president's past may be catching up with him. On Christmas Day in 1989, Europe's last communist dictatorship came to a bloody end. Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena were tried and executed in an army barracks outside Bucharest. It was hailed as a triumph over the regime and its feared secret police, the Securitate. But the prosecutor at Ceausescu's trial begs to differ. Când aveam un dosar uh, întocmit conform tuturor procedurilor. Și judecătorul Popagică, președintele, ce nu lasă să înceapă procesul, că o să vină martor, o să aducem probe în legătură cu ce a făcut, cu toate crimele făcute în timpul comunismului. But no witnesses came, and in under an hour, the Ceausescu's were sentenced and executed. At the time, Vornia was a young prosecutor, ordered to write an indictment by hand and read the charges. Vonya believes the trial was a setter, that Ceausescu was sacrificed in order to save the communist elite. Și în felul ăsta, administrația comunistă a rămas pe poziții practic și după Revoluție. Și România n-a avut niciodată loc un proces al comunismului. Nici măcar nu au fost numărate victimele comunismului de când s-a instaurat comunismul în România până în prezent. It's early morning on a bleak hillside in Transylvania. A small team of forensic experts are at work. Unpaid and with no official status, they are led by historian and poet Marius Aprea, Romania's leading authority on the Securitate. Și cine mai interesat de asta? De ce? Iar răspunsul pe care îl dau întotdeauna e foarte simplu. Niciodată nu este prea târziu pentru adevăr. Asta este esența. Nu contează altceva. Adevărul. Să aflăm, să încercăm să, să aflăm ce s-a întâmplat cu cei uciși. By midday, the team make a gruesome discovery. The bones of a political prisoner dumped in a mass grave known locally as the Valley of the Slaves. The death took place over 20 years ago. Yet a prayer's work is rocking Romania's political elite. Five years ago, he created the Institute for the Investigation of Communist Crimes, winning the support of President Basescu. But when a prayer began unearthing the bodies of Securitate victims and demanding justice, Basescu, fearful of what he was finding, sacked him from the organization he had founded. I'm a atunci când a spus că va scăpa țara de securiști și comuniști. Nu doar că i-a pus la loc la putere, dar m-a și dat afară. Romania's most iconic figure is Dracula. And every day thousands of visitors pour through the gates of his castle in the market town of Bran to revel in the gory legend. It is the country's most popular tourist attraction. 
but not far away, in the town of Pitesht, an equally gruesome chapter of Romanian history unfolded not so long ago. And some of its torture victims are still around. You won't find Pitesht on any tourist map. Its grim past has been virtually airbrushed from history, for it was here, in a specially built prison, that the Securitate conducted the Pitesht experiment. Prisoners, mostly intellectuals and priests, were coerced into torturing and executing other prisoners with false promises of freedom. Inmates were routinely force-fed a holy communion of human excrement in place of bread. Nikolai Pukaria spent 20 years as a political prisoner. Pentru că a fost perioada Paștelor în care ne-au umilit, ne-au umilit în fel și cuc, în loc de, 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 de prohod, au făcut o parodie de prohod, cu blestfamii de tot felul, cu majocurirea Sfinților lui Hristos. De, de exemplu, a pus pe unul din noi care era student la teologie să te pe urdău, a scos din urdău murdărie, the writer Solzhenitsyn called Pitesh the most terrible act of barbarism in the modern world, yet few have heard of it. But Romania is littered with jails once filled with political prisoners, like this one at Jilava a gulag for the countless victims of the communist regime. To challenge the system meant torture or worse. One man who escaped the grip of the Securitate was Laszlo Turkish. At the time, he was a humble priest. Because I, I was a faithful priest of the Reformed Church from uh, Transylvania, Romania, and I was very much engaged for my church and committed for my community, I had the spiritual motivation to do something for my people, for my little flock. Turkish was risking everything by preaching democracy and liberty in his weekly sermons and had to be stopped. We were all the time threatened by terror and violence. Uh, the policemen on the Securitate officers uh, visited us and uh, and threatened us uh, and uh, tried to intimidate us. The man tasked to break Turkish was Major Radu Tinu, head of the Securitate for the county of Timisoara. Tinu, who admitted hatching a plan to abduct the troublesome priest, agreed to meet us at his dacha in the mountains. I think that no one who I know, citită și bună din Timișoara, din București, nimeni nu mi-a reproșat. Încă mulți se mai zic că de ce nu l-am i-am dat în cap. You have heard about Radu Tinu. Yes, he was uh, one of the the most uh, threatening figures of that of those times. Tinu put Turkish under close surveillance. Când au început să facă ei tot felul de de năzbiti și nu, nu am avut dizident, nu am avut un dizident care a avut curajul să să înfrunte pe Ceaușescu ăsta. A fost o fost deșteaptă de At one point, knife-wielding assassins were even dispatched to kill Turkesh and his family, but were surprised to find visitors who helped defend the priest. We are not alone at home, me and my wife and my son, and that is why we escaped the, to be killed. Uh, and afterwards came uh, Radutin and, and uh, threatened us and uh, made pressures upon me to leave. But when they came for Turkish, his parishioners formed a human chain around his house. They stopped the whole process of eviction and uh, 
uh, and a spontaneous uh, revolt uh, changed into a, an anti-communist uh, demonstration in some hours in that day. From one particular case started a general uprising against the whole regime. Turkish's defiance lit the touch paper that spread the revolution from Timisoara to the rest of Romania. In the ensuing battles, thousands were killed or injured. But within days, the regime had fallen. Nevertheless, many wonder how much things have really changed. Twenty years on, many of the Securitate's secrets are stored in a vast archive outside Bucharest. Files were kept on virtually everyone with the sole purpose of blackmail, an immense dossier to control the population. It took 18 years before they were finally opened to the public, and only then under pressure from the EU. In a country where brother spied on brother Reading one's personal file is often a traumatic experience. Twenty-four kilometers of documents still lie on these shelves. A small team of investigators are sifting through them, searching for evidence of human rights abuses. It will take decades. And this is an, um, an intercepted letter. Jamina Nagash has been the head of investigations for 10 years, but she can still be shocked by the archive. It's nothing easy to understand from a human point of view. Um, it's tragic, it's, it's monstrous. The details are more often than not monstrosities and very hard to accept as a real story. That's what everybody from outside keep, keeps telling us, well, I can't believe this. It's not possible. It was possible and it happened. After the fall of Ceausescu, the files remained in the hands of the new secret police, the SRI, who were made up almost entirely of former Securitate officers. Many of the files had been destroyed, including that of Bezescu, the current president. For the Securitate, it was business as usual. Nagash has sent over a thousand cases to the prosecutor general, but to date, no one has been convicted not least because the judicial system remains riddled with Securitate officers. If you see the list of persons we send to the court, you, you will see some of the names in the list are Securitate officers in the judicial system. They were assimilated immediately after the revolution, some of them. So they are still active, of course. It's very simple. According to Konstantin Buka, who was a captain in the Securitate before joining the SRI, state surveillance has actually increased. Thrown out of the SRI, he now speaks openly. Ascultă telefonul unui om politic sau unui ziare, ce mai contează? A, până la urmă la toți ne ascultă, știți? Președinții dau tonul și spun, da, și pe mine mă ascultă. Ce contează că mă ascultă? Și lumea zice, bă, dacă l-a zis, ce, dacă mă ascultă și pe mine. Nimeni nu se gândește că este o răstrângere a drepturilor omului. A, intra, a asculta telefonul înseamnă să-ți intre în casă, să-ți intre în intimitatea ta, a familiei tale, a relațiilor tale. E ceva urât. The regime's political opponents find that they are still shadowed and continue to have their phone calls monitored, like novelist Stelian Tanase. They want to control and to know everything about us. What? My private life, my manuscripts, my friends, my relatives. They're, they're details of, of our lives. 
but they want to be in control, then it means to have details about me, information to break my, to threaten me. Under Ceausescu, the Securitate maintained a tight grip on all sectors of the Romanian economy. After the revolution, they simply put state assets under their own control. Securiștii și activiștii care au răspuns de uh, comerț, au luat spațiile comerciale, toate magazinele s-au privatizat, nu știu, securiștii care au răspuns de industrie, au luat marile regii, fabrici, nu știu. Nu poporul care a ieșit în stradă n-a luat nimic, adică toți săraci au rămas oamenii. 80% of Romanian rich people come from the securitate structures. If you read Forbes or Capital, they publish every year the list with uh, the richest people in Romania. You can take name by name and you, you, you could discover very easily their connection with the securitate. And away from the capital, it's as if the bad old days of Ceausescu had never gone away. Deep in the Carpathian Mountains lies the spa town of Borsec, once the haunt of royals. But now, many of the villas lie derelict. With the fall of communism, they should have been returned to their owners. But real estate companies have delayed handovers. The buildings become dilapidated and are then bought for a pittance, only to be pulled down, a cynical ploy to acquire prime real estate. And now most of the town belongs to former secret police. Otto Kish, who has lived in Borsak all his life, was the only resident prepared to talk. Szekum részéről lett megvásárolva. It's a similar picture elsewhere. Down the road from Borsek, Giza Kemene has reclaimed his family's old hunting lodge, while all around his ancestral lands are disappearing. Családa kemény család, az 400 éves múltal rendelkezik Erdélyben. A konkrét én családom, tehát a nagyapám családja az száz éves múltal rendelkezik itt. Of particular concern to Khomeini are the family's vast forests which are being cut down. When we filmed the loggers, they threatened to run us off the road. Nehéz elviselni, nagyon nehéz elviselni azt, hogy nap mint nap Több, több száz köbméter fát elvisznek az erdőből, de nyilvánvalóan itt nincsenek rendben a dolgok. Even Borsek's famous mineral water, the region's major asset, sold throughout Romania, is owned by former Securitate officers. To the outsider, Parts of Romania can appear strikingly beautiful, scarcely touched by the 20th century. Traditions are strong, and religion remains central to the lives of many in this deeply spiritual country. The Orthodox Church is the one institution which still commands respect. But is it truly a safe haven? Preparing to consecrate a 400-year-old church, Archbishop Vasily Zania Pimen cuts an impressive dash. He is number two in the Orthodox Church. But Pimen led a double life, first spying on his brother priest for the Securitate, before graduating to Ceausescu's Foreign Intelligence Service and informing on dissidents overseas. There was a, a red... Uh, uh, priesthood, as we used to call it in the time of the communism, which was collaborating with the state and with the communist party. 
there was even a part of the church and of the priesthood who was collaborating with the secret police. Pimin is just one of a score of senior bishops who betrayed their flock for the dictator, yet who continue to enjoy rank and status in the church. It is uh, very harmful uh, because uh, the evildoers of the communism could get free without any consequences, and even they saved not only their life, but they became rich and they got economic power and then changed their economic power into political power. <laughs> But how far does it go? Many allege that President Bisescu himself worked for the Securitate. His own personal file may have been destroyed, but his name appears on other official Securitate documents, like this register of approved collaborators, sufficient proof, say his opponents, of his complicity. No, still. Nu știu, e o chestie de, de psihologie, e o chestie de psihologie. Din punctul meu de vedere, uh, nu văd de ce nu a spune. Da, domnilor, am fost, asta era situația. Dosarul de informator al lui Băsescu a fost fără doar și poate distrus. Ori, uh, eu nici nu mă mir, dar am văzut toate actele care dovedesc că el a colaborat. Eu nu am dubii că nu ar fi lucrat cu securitatea. Basescu's seat of power is the People's Parliament, the second largest building in the world. From here, he must have thought that he was untouchable. But earlier this year, Pent-up fury over an eroding standard of living erupted into three days of rioting. Anger was directed at former communists with banners declaring the communists stole everything we had and down with the mafioso government. Prompting Basescu to appoint Mihai Ungrianu, the head of Romania's secret police, as his new prime minister. But this was a step too far. Final proof to many that Romania was still being run by the Securitate. If you, in Romania it's a democracy, you need the head of secret service to be the head of the government. But you, you know the, the argument and Bush and Putin? Maybe it's a new era. This kind of people who, who control the secret service becoming tough politicians. It was a mistake, I think. It was, not, it was not a good lesson of democracy. Within days, Prime Minister Angrianu was forced to quit, replaced by Victor Ponta, a political enemy of Basescu, who vowed to take on the old guard. He attempted to impeach Basescu for abuse of power. It went to a referendum. And although almost 90% voted against Basescu, he survived on a technicality. We have an appearance of democracy, we have a constitution, we have unions, free press, uh, parties, election, we have everything, but it's only a facade, you know, this concept, facade democracy, like in South America, Romania, it's a South American democracy. It's a, it's a half democracy, half dictatorship. And for the countless victims of Romania's communist dictatorship, there may be no justice. Marius Oprea and his team pay their respects to the dead by joining the priests in Holy Communion at the mass grave. Dreptatea pe pământ o face pământul. În România și nicăieri nu se face pentru cei uciși de comuniști. Poate o face Dumnezeu în cer, dar Nu știu, n-am fost acolo.